In this learning module, I'm going to talk about the paper settings. We will access the paper settings by clicking the paper setting button in the lower left corner. When we bring up the paper settings screen, we'll see that we've got our trays along the left hand side and then information about how that paper is set up through the rest of the screen. If I look here on this, the first uh, line is the paper profile name since in this particular case I do not have this paper set up by a paper name nothing appears in here the next three things that you'll see on this screen are the paper size paper type and weight of the stock those are as I have mentioned in earlier modules the most important things for getting aligned between your print job settings and the paper tray settings in order for that job to run we will also notice if I select a different tray that other trays are going to have paper information specific to the paper that's been loaded and configured in that tray. So in this case we'll see that we did pick this paper profile by a name and it shows that name here. If I were to go back now to the original machine screen we can see that those paper names appear here whereas tray number one that we looked at first just says plain it just has the type of paper named because no name has actually been set for that tray when I come back into here you'll notice next to this blank paper profile line I've got a recall button if I click on the recall button then it brings up a list of paper types that have been stored in the machine We've got several screens full of them here. You can see in the lower left that I'm accessing different screens by scrolling through these. And you'll also notice that in this case the majority of these are grayed out with a few of them as I've scrolled through that have been available to be selected. The reason these are available to be selected is that the machine knows that the paper guides are set for 8.5 by 11 paper so it's only letting me choose paper that has the paper size of 8.5 by 11 specified in a few cases it may give me the ability to select something that is a custom size paper because custom size papers do not care where the guides are it just lets you choose them so if I wanted to select one of these paper types, I could come in and say I wanted to say that that tray contains my 20 pound bond letter. You'll see that that highlights. I click the OK button down here at the bottom right. And when I return back to the paper settings screen, accessing on tray number one, I now see that I have a paper name listed in here. The next thing I can do is say that I would like to set up a paper that is not already programmed into the machine and I can either set that up as an ad hoc whereas this is just a, a single use and I don't necessarily want to store it in the tray or store it in the paper catalog but I could if I wanted to. To do those functions I would go into my chain settings button and when I access the chain settings button we see here that we once again have a list of features that we can set for that paper down the left hand side and as I select each of these in turn you'll see that the right side of the screen changes to signify what settings are available for that paper. So the first thing that we can look at here is my paper type is set to plain. I've got the option of plain, fine, and color specific. These are uncoded stocks. If we look at some of the other settings that are available here but are grayed out, we'll see that those are coded stocks. The reason these are grayed out is while my paper weight is set this low at 75 to 80 grams per square meter, I could not have a paper that is that light of a weight and it be a coded stock and still be within specification of the machine. If I were to click the weight button, it gives me the option now to be able to change the weight of that paper. So we'll see here that this machine is set so its default is in grams per square meter. You'll see there's some other units down here in this center section that indicate different kinds of paper I could have. So for example, if I don't know what the grams per square meter of the paper is, but I know that it's an 80 pound cover, I can choose the cover button and then I can say I want 66 to 80 pound cover. Returning back now to the paper type, we'll see that this allows me to choose coded stocks. 
So I could say that this is a coded GL. If you're not familiar with how this terminology works, you can look here in the lower section of this right side of the screen and it will tell you what these papers mean. In general, G is for glossy, M is for matte, L is for either a laser or digital stock, O is for an offset stock. The next thing that I can look at here is the paper size. When I look at the paper size, we'll see that this says standard. When I have the paper size set for standard, it's going to look at the paper guides that are set up in that tray and determine what size paper it thinks is in that tray based on the position of the guides. In most cases, that will probably be what you would use the machine, the setting that you would use on the machine, and it would give you this is letter, this is 11 by 17, 12 by 18, etc. In some cases, you may have a paper stock that's a custom size, and we have a custom button that we can use. When I go to custom size, it allows me to program in the dimensions of that paper. So you'll see here that I've got dimension 1 and dimension 2, and it's indicating by this arrow that that's the feed direction. So when you put it in the tray, this would be the way that it would be laying in the tray. If, for example, I had a 9.5 inch paper stock, then we can see that I would set nine and a half inches as the edge along the left hand side that would be the feed edge and I could set the dimension number two for the length of that paper at 17 inches. We'll see here that sometimes this wants to be a little difficult since I'm running this as a remote screen the buttons are a little finicky but I eventually get it set to 9.5 by 17 inch paper. I've also got the ability up here to say that I'd like to do a size registration or a size recall. If you have a specific size of paper that you use on a frequent basis, you could go into size registration and you can see that I could set up size registrations here. If we come back to this now and I click OK, we will see that now my paper size says 9.500 by 17.000. One of the things to note here is that when you see three digits after the decimal point, that indicates that this is set up as a custom size paper. If I hit the OK button here and go back to my paper settings, we'll see that it says it's custom size. It's 9.5 by 17. And if I were to close out of this and go back to the machine screen, we will see here that it now says that tray number one has 9.5000 by 17.000. It was the coded stock, and it's an 80 pound. On this screen, it doesn't tell us 80 pound of what type of paper, which is why most customers tend to use the grams per square meter because it actually gives a value that doesn't matter what type of paper is in there. In this case, I don't know whether this is a text weight, a cover weight, a bond weight, or whatever is in that stock. Returning back into the paper settings, I can now see that I've got these settings put together for this paper. If I look at the change settings button, we'll see that there are some other settings that can be made here. Colored paper just gives the paper another name. It doesn't necessarily restrict the use of the paper by the name. So by that I mean that if I were to select this and say that it was a red paper stock, it will show that that is a red paper stock when I return back out. But it does not stop this from using this paper if the paper is set to be white in your print job. So it would still pull that even though this shows that it is a red, a red paper that's in that stock. If I return back now to my colored paper, I'll set this back to white. You'll see that I've got an option here for punch. Punch does not tell the machine to put a punch in the paper. It tells the machine whether there are punch holes already in your paper. So if you're using a pre-punch stock, you would tell that, that you have put a pre-punch stock in 
and this will let the machine know that the sensors may occasionally detect a hole going by as that paper feeds through but not to think that's a jam. There are some other settings here for the both sides adjust, expert adjust, and color density adjust. We will leave those for a different training video. The relay unit curl adjust button here may or may not appear on your machine depending on your configuration. If it does appear, you can go into there and you can select different levels of curl adjustment to flatten the curl out of your paper so that when it comes and lays on the exit tray it is flat and if you wanted to either box that up or take it over to the bindery to cut or fold or whatever that it would be available to do that. It would be better for that because the paper would be flat. So now that I've got to this I could just go to the OK button and when I exit back out and come back out to the machine screen we will see that that paper is set up and as long as I set those settings for the custom paper size the paper name and the paper weight in my job properties that paper would pull and it would print one of the issues with this especially since it is set as a custom size paper is getting the custom size to transport properly between the print driver settings and the machine settings in many cases this does not line up exactly and will cause you problems because there's some math that takes place between the print driver and the machine where it converts it into points and then converts the points back into uh, inch size and in some cases this will go off two to three thousandths of an inch which will prevent that paper from running one of the things that you can do to avoid that situation is if I come into my paper settings again you'll see that I had a register and OK option down here if I do register and OK then it says what would you like to do with this I didn't use didn't start with a setting to begin with a named paper to begin with so I don't have an option to overwrite I can however do a new store or I could just say that I want to cancel I don't want to do anything with this You'll notice also here on this screen I've got a specify size checkbox. Especially since this is a custom size, but in general for almost all papers you're going to want to have the machine specify the size when it stores that in the paper catalog because it will save you hassles later on. In this case I'm going to say I'd like to do a new store and it's going to ask me what I'd like that name to be. For my purposes, I'm going to say that I want this to be a 9.5 by 17 cover stock and do an OK on that. We'll see that my name changes now to 9.5 by 17 cover and when I close back out I can now see that I've got nine and a half by seventeen cover when I go to my print job and I'm setting up the print properties I can now say I'd like to pull a paper name from the paper catalog I will have that nine point five by seventeen cover available and it will then bring all the settings from the machine back into that print job so everything will line up and it will work fine moving forward and that paper name will also now appear in the paper catalog so I can choose it the next time I put that paper into the machine.